welcome back to another episode of intellectual geniuses yes intellectual geniuses allahu akbar it sounds so strange so perplexing my dear viewers intellectual geniuses before i do explain what the title is some of you would already understand what we are referring to what we shall be speaking about those who would have watched the previous episodes my dear viewers we always begin by listening to the benefits in sending salawat upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the greatest of mankind the peace of our hearts and minds the most generous and kind has stated adorn your gatherings by sending salawat upon me for indeed your sending salawat shall be noor for you on the day of judgment but if you was make it a regular habit of yours to send salawat upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are speaking about intellect and something which closely comes along with intellect along with intelligence you know we have intelligence we have wisdom but another thing is a strong memory my dear viewers by reciting durood sharif upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this strengthens our memory so there may be students here there may be people generally who would think i have a very weak memory a possible solution to this could be sending salawat upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inshallah azza wa jalla this shall benefit you in the improvement of your memory sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam intellectual geniuses previously we have heard of a incident during the life of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a incident of the life of hazrat sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam we have heard about hazrat abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, many of hazrat ali al murtadha karam allah wajhahu kareem now today my dear viewers i would like to speak about an individual who truly undoubtedly he is a genius you know a very intelligent a person a very clever person we did mention the definitions of intelligence of wisdom which basically to put them all together my dear viewers means to have knowledge and also to be able to understand that knowledge and to be able to apply that knowledge and when it comes to wisdom to perform the right act in the right manner according to the right etiquettes at the right time so subhanallah we have had many examples previously i also gave the viewers the opportunity to think about some of the questions i asked to see if they were able to answer them my dear viewers were you able to answer the previous ones for those that have what's the previous episodes if yes then wow honestly i would say wow if not then don't worry because taking a rough guess i would be surprised if from amongst all our viewers let's just say if there were to be a million for an example if there were to be a million i would be surprised if one person really this is the you know the questions which are asked and some people will be thinking or oh, is it actually that difficult allahu akbar hazrat ali al murtada karam allahu wajhahu kareem the answers he gave were just as you would say on another level my dear viewers really they were out of this world they were brilliant my dear viewers of the nature today inshallah azza wa jalla we shall be hearing about another individual 
about somebody who is known as Hazrat Nu'man bin Thabit somebody you've all heard of many people would be thinking I've never heard of Hazrat Nu'man bin Thabit yes that's because he's more famously known by his title Imam Azam Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu as I mentioned was no ordinary individual no as a young child there was a person who came from Rome he came from Rome and he took to the stage to a platform and he called the people around and said everybody gather around I have three questions for you all I have three questions for you all everybody gather around let's see you, you know you are Muslims here let's see how intelligent your scholars are I have just three questions let's see if you can answer my three questions so that when he was shouting people were gathering around and when others this, this is basically how it is when you see some people gathering together everybody wants to know what's happening there people gathered people gathered Hazrat Nu'man bin Thabit who was later to be known as Imam Azam Hazrat Abu Hanifa and those of us who were Hanafi Alhamdulillah proud to be following such an individual he was also there at the a very young age possibly 10 or even younger than the age of 10 Madhivi was so those individuals who are watching and they are 10 or younger they would be surprised inshallah you know many would be intrigued how clever is this 10 year old let's hear Hazrat Abu Hanifa was at the Nu'man bin Thabit as a child he was with his own father who's known as Thabit and many people had gathered around they also called the scholars scholars had also come to listen to this person's questions and this person proudly with confidence he says let's see if anybody can answer my three questions I shall go here and I shall leave you a huge amount of treasure a huge amount of wealth I shall give you people so the people say what are your questions he says these are my questions he asks his question he says the first question he says, what is Allah doing right now? This is a person who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's trying to turn people's minds away from belief, away from religion. He's an atheist. And he says, I've got three questions. Let's see if you can answer my three questions. The first question, what is Allah doing right now? The second question, what was before Allah? You can use the example of God if you were to use the word God. What is God doing right now? What was before God? And the third question, in which direction is God or in which direction is Allah facing? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow, no. These questions, even for us, they are tricky, my dear viewers. How are you going to answer this? It's difficult to give an answer to such questions. Just the questions themselves are strange questions. And yes, that's how the rest of the people also felt. They were silenced. They were not able to answer the questions. And the local people, they were looking up towards the scholars. This person giving, asking you questions, answer him. My dear viewers, these questions are not only based on knowledge. It's not only knowledge that you must just give a straightforward answer. No. This required intelligence, but not only intelligence. This required wisdom. Really, this required wisdom. This requires a person to think outside of the box. Wisdom normally comes with age. Wisdom comes with experience. But from amongst the public, from amongst the crowd that was watching, from amongst the onlookers, there was a child who raises his hands and says, I shall answer your question. He says, all three of your questions, I shall answer each and every single one of them. The father who has 
his son next to him. He takes a look at his son. He says, son, put your hand down. Son, put your hand down. He says, father, no. Father, I can answer the questions. I will answer his questions, father. Father says, you can answer his questions? He says, yes, let me answer his question. So this young person, this young child, he says to that person, I will answer your questions. That, that person himself, imagine his, what he must be thinking, wow, what all of the people, a young child is saying, he'll answer my questions. This is, this is an embarrassment. He's come with confidence. This young child, he says, okay, repeat your questions. He says, I shall give the answer to your question. So that person, he says, my first question was, what is God doing right now? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing right now? This child, he replies, and he says, before I give you the answer, don't you find it strange that the person asking the questions is up there on a high platform and the person giving the answers is down here? Don't you think it should be the other way around? So that person says, okay, that makes sense. Since I'm actually the one who's asking the questions, that's fine, you come up here. I'll go down there, I'll ask the questions, you give the answers. So Hazrat Nu'man, this child, Hazrat Nu'man, he ascends the platform and that other person, he descends and then this child, he gives the answer. He says that right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me respect. He has elevated me up here and he has admonished you. He has disgraced you and sent you down there. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has just done. Wow, you know, the crowd, imagine how they must be, must be shocked, amazed. What a brilliant answer. The question was, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing right now? It says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me respect and honor. He has elevated me and he has humiliated you. Subhanallah, what an answer, my dear viewers. And then he says, okay, you've answered the first question. What about my second question? What was before Allah? So this child he says, do you know how to count? The person says, of course I know how to count. Then count, count 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's okay. Brilliant. Do you know how to count backwards? Many of the young children maybe out there thinking, yes, I know how to count backwards. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it says, but before that, before 1, and the person replies, before 1, there is nothing before 1. There is, before 1, there's 0, there's nothing, there's nothing before 1. What do you mean before 1? So this child, he says, just like there is nothing before the number one, similarly, there is nothing before the one and only true God. Allahu Akbar. Again, mashallah, he's given a brilliant answer. The entire crowd is like, subhanallah. This is a number one, which you are talking about, there's nothing before it. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a one and only true God. There cannot be anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, okay then, my third question. Let's see you answer my third question. He says, what was your third question? I'll ask it again. So the third question was, in which direction is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing? He says, do you know what a flame is? And he says, this flame, tell me. In which direction is this flame facing? The person says, this flame is not facing in any particular direction. It is a flame, it doesn't face one particular direction, it is going everywhere. 
he says if that is a normal flame of the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nur samawati wal ard that just like that flame is not facing one particular direction similarly we do not limit one particular direction for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this person who came here with such confidence I have three questions for you all let's see if any of your scholars let's see if anybody could answer my question and if you was this young boy this young boy is written Nu'mam in Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu he answered him he answered him and he shattered his confidence this was Hazrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu some of you may be thinking wow what brilliant answers you know how could he think of that how could he come out with such my dear viewers this is not just knowledge this is not only intelligence but it is all combined knowledge intelligence and wisdom the ability as we mentioned to think outside of the box this is just a term used think outside of the box yes my dear viewers this was written Nu'mam in Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu and there are also many other incidents mentioned in another of the same individual since we are talking about Hazrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu it said that there was a debate between Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu and an atheist a person who believes in he doesn't believe in any God whatsoever Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu a time a date was fixed that this munadhara that this debate shall take place at such and such time such and such place so Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the day of the debate he also makes his way to go there now everybody has arrived the public has arrived the atheist himself who's ready to debate he's also there he's ready to debate has the Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu he's waiting for Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu the entire crowd is there but Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu has not arrived Everybody's thinking, where is Imam Azam Abu Hanifa? What manners are these? What etiquettes are these? We have a prescribed time for the debate, but yet the person has not come. And then after some time, who suddenly appears? The Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this person, he says, we had fixed this time and it's taken so long. Look how late you are. What is this that you've come so late? Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala he says that the reason for this is our debate, yes, was at such and such time. But from my house to here, there is a river in between. There is water in between. And in order for me to cross that, I require a boat but as you see everybody is already here so how was I able to make my way here without a boat and they think wow so there was no means of transport for you to get here so then how is it that you came he says but then what happened is suddenly there was this tree and this tree began to bring itself to pieces it began to cut itself into pieces and these pieces of wood then came together and made the shape of a boat I stepped upon that boat and then this ship or this boat it made its way across the river across the water and now I am here the person is thinking is this guy crazy you know you must be thinking is this guy crazy what does he mean a tree all on its own 
pulled itself with its roots, pulled itself out. How difficult it is to chop a tree. Those who have experience would know. And some of the roots, how deep they go. This person is saying the tree itself came out of the ground. And then the tree itself chopped into planks of wood, which themselves came together and created this boat. That's impossible, preposterous. It's not even possible for such a thing to happen. I do not believe you. So then Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu he says, debate over. He says, debate over. Person says, how is the debate over? He says, if you can never imagine, you can never believe that a tree can chop itself into pieces of wood, bring itself together in the form of a boat, then how can you possibly propose that the heavens and the earth all on their own have come together? That the seven earths, one layer on top of the other has come together. That one being after another has come together with such perfection. How can you possibly believe that? So immediately he silenced that person. My dear viewers, this was the answer of none other than Hazrat Imam Azm Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This was his intellectual intuition, his ability, my dear viewers, his, his intellectual agility, what he possessed. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu, not only was he knowledgeable, but he was extremely, extremely intelligent. And when it came to answering anybody who proposed questions, anybody who proposed any objections to Islam, then he was able to give such answers. This is another example of a intellectual genius. This is the Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu Since we are speaking about the Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu there is another famous um, quick story which I will mention. As the Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu who is very very careful before he gave answers. It doesn't mean he just gave answers, no. But he was very very careful before he gave answers. They said that one person came to him to ask him a question. And this question, Allahu Akbar, it was a, it's a very, very difficult one to answer. And some people would quickly rush towards an answer. Let's see, my dear viewers, I will mention the question. Let's see what your answer to it is. So a person came and he asked about a person. He comes to Imam Abu Hanifa Radranhu and he says, if a person was to say that he doesn't yearn for Jannah, he doesn't wish for Jannah. He doesn't fear the fire of hell. That he eats the flesh of the dead. That without any qira'at, without any ruku, without any sujood, he performs his salah. That he testifies without having seen. So he will give testification, but he has not even seen anything before he becomes a witness. So he testifies as a witness before he has even seen. He dislikes haq, the truth. And he loves or he has a inclination towards fitna. A person would think, could such a person even be a Muslim? He doesn't yearn for Jannah. He doesn't fear the fire of hell. He prays his salah without any kirat, without any ruku, without any sujood. Could this person even be a Muslim? My dear viewers, again, I'll give you a moment to think. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa anhu, there are some students along with him. He asked the students, what do you think? Imam Azam Abu Hanifa anhu, then he himself gives the answer. He said that he smiles. And he says that such a person, subhanAllah, he doesn't yearn 
for Jannah because he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much he doesn't perform his actions and his good deeds for Jannah, no he does it solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he doesn't do it because he's afraid of the fire of hell, no he does it out of his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then you would be thinking he prays his salah without any ruku or sujood or kirat Imam Azam Bahani for Radha Hutaran who he says that's because he also prays his funeral prayers. Subhanallah. He also performs funeral prayers, which is a good action. And the funeral prayer, you do not perform any ruku or sujood. You do not do the qiraat. But then he eats the flesh of the dead. Why? Because he eats fish. But then again, you may be thinking, that this person, he bears witness without seeing. Imam Azam who says, he bears witness, he testifies. He does the shahada, ashadun la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. He has not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he bears witness that there is one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, and that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he dislikes the haq. Why? That's because death is haq. Death is definite. Undoubtedly, it is the truth. It is inevitable, and he dislikes death. And he possesses an inclination to fitna. What does this mean? Mal, wealth, and children. They are a fitna, it's mentioned that they are a fitna and this person is inclined towards them. He is inclined towards his wealth, he is inclined towards his children. That person is said when he heard this answer, normally a person would think this person is probably not even a Muslim. Allah Akbar, how can such a person make such a claim? How can he say such? That person, when he hears these answers, it's said that he kisses him, he kisses his head. And he says, indeed, you are a treasure of knowledge. The Imam Azam Buhani for Radha Hutal Anhu. My dear viewers of Madani channel, Alhamdulillah, today we spoke of one individual. Really, just one incident comes after another incident. I we did wish to speak about many different people, but Allah Ta'ala, Alam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. And we plan whatever we may plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners, my dear viewers. Maybe inshallah we'll have another time in which we shall hear much more about some intellectual geniuses. But my dear viewers, please try to take a lesson from each and every single one of our programs, of our episodes. Today's lesson, my dear viewers, don't give a quick response all the time. Yes, don't always just give a quick response but think about things my dear viewers before you give answers think about this Imam Azam Abu Hanifa he knew the answers he knew the answers there were many other people also other scholars who remained quiet who didn't immediately give an answer Imam Azam Abu Hanifa before going there he played the entire part this was wisdom this was his intelligence my dear viewers but it doesn't mean that everybody has the ability to give answers and sometimes we may give the wrong answers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Continue to watch Madani channel. Inshallah we shall have much more. Please continue to recite the Ruh Sharif upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. This Eid al Abha, this Eid al Abha, this Eid al Abha, this Eid al Abha. May Allah's blessings bring happiness, peace, and prosperity.